think this brings us to our debate of the week, which we alluded to several times before with TJ and NHL stuff. Um, is Evander Kane recently? His wife had put up a huge Instagram post about them getting divorced. She has one child with them. She's pregnant with the second one, uh, and said made alluded to which what people have already know about Evander Kane is that he's a huge gambler. He's kind of a compulsive gambler. He's in debt. He's filed for bankruptcy. He owes money, credit to casinos. Um, but she had said that he was actually sp- sports gambling on his own team and betting against them and throwing games in order to win money, um, which is obviously a huge accusation, huge allegation against them. Um, and with that comes with our debate of the week as well. First, we'll talk about Evander Kane for a little bit, but then we'll get into debate of the week where, you know, we just did the Field of Dreams review where Shoeless Joe Jackson, someone who's banned from baseball because he threw a game. And then also – He threw he threw four games. Obviously, he threw plenty of games, the World Series. But um, – and then obviously Pete Rose, who's still banned from baseball. So my question is with the legal – the debate of the week is with legalization of gambling, um, do you think bans on guys like Shoeless Joe and um, Pete Rose eventually be gone or lifted? I know it's weird to say Shoeless Joe's still banned, you know, he's already dead. But that just means, like, I guess history books, Hall of Fame stuff, same with Pete Rose. So It's simple. Kind of- it, it doesn't matter if it's legalized or not. Everybody knows the rules. It says it in the clubhouse. One bite, everybody knows the rules. Yeah. <laughs> you know the rules. And you willingly break the rules, and you're doing it selfishly. You're, you're letting your team down. And you, you got to face the music. you got to face the consequences. And, and with the Vander Kane – we're going to find out what's true, what's not true. I think it's way too early, and I think it's it, it's the problem with society right now is everybody on Twitter just started eviscerating him. And then he comes back, and he says his piece and says, you know, she's full of it. She's making it up. We've had nothing but a hellish relationship. We're getting divorced. I've always tried to take care of my kid. I'm going to take care of my other kid. And she's kept me from seeing my children. Um, you know, it, it, it's it, when you have a hostile family environment and no one, none of us know except them involved, we're not here to make judgment until we find out the facts. And anybody that jumps to assumptions and, and, and condemning either side, you're, you're just, you're making a fool of yourself and you're not helping the situation. And this is going to cause a media stir and we're going to find out what happens. And then we can decide who's a piece of shit. But there's no reason to jump ahead and just start either, you know, saying, yep, Kane's gone. Get him out of the league. They're doing an investigation. The NHL is going to find out. They're going to find out. Yeah. It, pretty quickly, we're going to find out what, what went on. And how he is at home, we don't know. You, you hope it's all just anger towards each other, people saying terrible shit about each other. And that's all it is because there's kids involved. And who gives a shit about hockey at that point? But – it, it, it's both stories are convincing. Both stories are very believable. Um, if he, if he bet on the sport and threw games, he's going to be out of the NHL and, and he earned it. But if he didn't, he still now has to go in and play with all this family shit weighing on his mind. Not to mention last season, if that's when he's throwing games, he had one of his best seasons of his career, if not his best season of his career. So, I mean, that, that, that kind of adds fuel to the argument of who knows? Somebody's full of shit in this situation. Mm-hmm. Somebody's totally full of shit in this situation. And it's just too early to judge. But Shoeless Joe, Pete Rose, you bet on the game, you're gone. And no one's going to feel bad for you. And if you want to sit outside the uh, Hall of Fame and sign autographs for $5 a piece to try to make money for the rest of your life, that's the life you want to live, have fun. It's not worth it. It's never worth it. Nick, what are your thoughts? Um, I agree with T. Like, well, we'll see what happens as far as Kane is concerned. Uh, it's fresh information from somebody that has a reason to hurt him. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like this is breaking news from a, a, a reporter that has a reason to hurt anybody because that's what reporters do. They have reasons to hurt people. It makes them money. But uh, it, it's his future ex-wife, so... I mean, she she has more reason than most to, to, to cause him pain. So take it for what it is until we find out what the truth is. And 
at that point you make your decision and the NHL will have to make their decision at that point. You know, there are pop, there's going to be an investigation about the whole situation and we'll see what, what, what the end result becomes. Um, as far as Pete Rose and, and Shoeless Joe Jackson are concerned is uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson is the example set for all major leaguers. All right. Like, uh, I guess there wasn't a determination made about what would happen if uh, if you gambled on the game um, up to that point. Well, he, he's the example set for the future. Apparently, Pete Rose didn't think that the, the rules applied to him. He made the same decision. Major League Baseball gave Pete Rose multiple chances to recant his lies about how he didn't gamble on baseball all right he refused to take their opportunity because they they told him when faye vincent was commissioner hey just admit that you did it and and we'll erase this whole thing and then early on and i think faye vincent gave him two opportunities to recant his his denial of what they knew was true and then early in bud seelig's uh time as commissioner he also gave him the opportunity to recant his lies about how he didn't gamble and uh, then finally, like in the late 90s, early 2000s, he was like, okay, I gambled. Guess what, pal? It's too late. Three strikes are out. You know? Uh, and now he's making Skechers commercials about how he's locked out of the Hall of Fame and it's a joke. Personally, I put, I think. Get in the hall. <laughs> yeah. Um, personally, I think there's too much. I mean, the, the Hall of Fame is a great thing, but let's not forget who votes you into the Hall of Fame. It's the media. So if they don't like you, you're not getting in. That's the long and short of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't put much clout into that just because if you're a borderline guy and they like you, you're in. If you're a borderline guy and they don't, you're out. Yeah. You know, that's the joke in Mr. 3000, right? Is that he has 2,999 hits and he's still not getting into the Hall of Fame. Like, that's ridiculous. Does that, does that one hit change any greatness of his career, especially on a technicality where it was a rain out? He got the hit. They just didn't count it. You know? Uh so I think the Hall of Fame just puts a little bit too much. I mean, again, that has not literally the Hall of Fame has no affiliation with Major League Baseball. I don't know if anybody knows that. Like the Hall of Fame oh, yeah. is not run by Major League Baseball. The Hall of Fame is run by the Baseball Writers Association of America, a bunch of scumbag reporters. So to sit there and say like, oh, yeah, you're not in the Hall of Fame. OK, great. I mean, there's plenty of good people that aren't in the Hall of Fame. But most of the people that vote people in the Hall of Fame are probably lousy pieces of dirt because uh, they're reporters and reporters are bad people. But other than that, I mean, I, I, I don't think they should be revered in any sense of the imagination. I mean, they, they, they were great baseball players, but they were lousy people. I mean, mm-hmm. especially Pete Rose. You knew the rules. It, like TJ says, it says it in the freaking dugout. No gambling. It yeah. says it in the dugout. Like, I remember when uh, Bobby Bonilla and Ricky Henderson got into trouble for playing cards in the dugout. Like, I, they, they could have been playing war for all we know. But the fact that there were cards in the dugout, never mind the fact that it, it, it became a bigger deal because there's no gambling in baseball. And if they were playing poker, they're in trouble because there's no gambling, not just on sports, any gambling whatsoever. You can't even bet to see who's going to spit sunflower seeds into a bucket. Yeah. So I don't think that Joe, that, that Joe Jackson or uh, Pete Rose have any place in baseball anymore. Uh, Pete Rose can get tombstoned by the mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee, for all I care. Doesn't really make a difference to me anymore. Pete Rose, I'm done with him. I get it. Oh, he's got the most hits of all time. Yeah, he's a cheater too. So, oh, but he never gambled on his own games. Okay, if you say so. (laughs) Prove it. I know he gambled. I will say, regarding Evander Kane, obviously, hell hath no fury like a woman's scorn. (laughs) I mean, I I don't – I mean, obviously, it's a a shitty situation. We don't know exactly what happened with him. I, I don't want to pass judgment on him and say he's, you know, he should be banned, but obviously if he did it, oh, I'm all for it. Ban him. Like you shouldn't have been doing it. Shouldn't be throwing games. Cause you know, for us as fans, we're watching baseball. We're watching hockey. We're watching all these sports because the unpredictability of the outcome. We're not watching it. Cause it's, you know, no offense. To anyone who loves wrestling. People love wrestling. I, I enjoy it. I know Nick, you enjoy WWE and AEW. But those are predetermined outcomes. Like I don't, I, I don't watch it because I know that's what it is. So I don't, I don't follow wrestling as much. I do enjoy it sometimes, not all the time. But but most people watch wrestling for the drama, not because of the outcome. Yes, I get that. But it's a predetermined outcome. 
I, I which can't you can bet on. How they, crazy is that? What? Which you can bet on. How crazy is that? Yeah, that's that's insane too. But I would say for for that, like it's if you're starting all of a sudden throwing games, there's no unpredictability that we enjoy as fans. Where anything could happen. My team's down by three runs. All ninth inning. All of a sudden, a comeback comes there. If you have a guy in the middle of that run where they have their down three runs, a guy just throws a game, it takes out the unpredictability of it anymore. And they ruin the enjoyment of the game for us as fans. So for me, yes, I do. I believe, like, if Fanny Kane did do this, obviously, should be gone. Um, Shula Show Jackson, same thing. Like, the ban probably shouldn't be lifted. Uh, I know people, Pete Rose is a little different. People are saying he's a manager. He was betting on his team. If he did bet on the games, he didn't bet on the games. But no one really knows exactly what he did. People saying that he bet on the games. Him so, being the manager is worse. I think it's worse because you could obviously make changes. You could take a pitcher out earlier. I'm pretty sure that, that Aaron Boone must be betting on these Yankee games playing Brett Gardner every day. He <laughs> exactly. must be betting on them to lose. So for me, I'm with you guys too. I'm not taking a contrarian standpoint here. I'm not going to say Pete Rose should be in the hall. Uh, is it incredible what he did? I don't knock his achievements. You know, most hits ever in baseball. He's not in the Hall of Fame as Pete Rose, Platt Hall of Famer, but he's in the Hall of Fame for all his records that he has. There's still pictures of Pete Rose in the walls. There's still the Matt's. unbreakable records that stand, the 4,000, you know, over 4,000 uh, 4, hits that Pete Rose has. So he's still in the Hall of Fame without being in the Hall of Fame. He's just, he doesn't have a plaque, plaque in there. He right. doesn't have a plaque, and you know what? Maybe he doesn't deserve it. He shouldn't have been fucking with the game of baseball. And that's, that's, that's the fact. Well, the last time somebody did that, it almost collapsed baseball. That, mm-hmm. that, that's the problem. The problem yeah. is, is that when the Black Sox did what they did, baseball almost folded. And that's why they made the rule. They had to do something. When that came out that Arnold Rothstein fixed the World Series, people lost faith in the game and walked away. And Babe Ruth saved baseball at that point. Just like when there's a strike, 94, there was a strike and McGuire and Sosa saved baseball. And then after steroids, there was a little bit of a, 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 a down, a down tick, you know, not as bad, but after the steroid scandal broke that, that was a down tick too. They just don't want that happening again. Mm -hmm. So they try to outlaw these things by taking the most severe punishment they can. You know, Pete Rose should just be thankful because from what I understand, he was gambling when he was playing too. Uh, they just didn't get caught at that point. Yeah, he should just be thankful they allowed him. They didn't get caught when he was playing. Yeah, it'd been worse for him. He, he would have been like Joe Jackson in his prime, playing in independent leagues, wishing he could play Major League Baseball. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but at this it's, point, I don't think Pete Rose has also, respect for the game anymore. I also, my last point would be that legalization of sports gambling doesn't change the rules that players can can't bet on their own game. Just like if you worked for a radio station, you can't call in and win a ch- and win a tickets to a, a concert. Yeah, I mean, or your family, or your family. Yeah, doesn't change the rules that you that players just like. Just like games. if marijuana is legalized in New York, they're not going to allow cops to smoke weed. They're not going to allow people that carry guns to smoke weed. No, or people that operate heavy machinery for the state or city of New York to be high. This is just not going to happen. So. Sorry, T. They're not going to let you get high. Yeah, I got to find a new vice. <laughs> <laughs> so that concludes our show today. Uh, we are the Scoreboard Addicts Podcast. We're in touch, so you be in touch. Thank you for being with us from Nick, the Rook, and TJ, who's hammered. Or actually, I guess Rook's hammered tonight. Um Thank you. Please like and subscribe at all these forms of media that you'll find over in these areas over here. Uh, Twitter, Instagram. We're on Facebook. Um, we're on YouTube. And Socoa Media, S-O-C-C-O-A Media on your Android and iPhone devices. Rookie, look, you got something to say. Yeah, and we're on Apple Podcasts now. Well. And we're on Apple Podcasts now, too. What's, what's the name on that one? It's the Scoreboard Addicts. So search it in the iTunes. Oh, not iTunes. A podcast app. Uh, Scoreboard Addicts. It'll come up. Also, uh, shout out Simone Biles. Bronze medal. She came back from her mental health break there. And actually, they said she found out her aunt passed away right before she had to perform uh, the balance beam. She came up with a bronze medal. So, congrats to you, Simone Biles. 
Incredible. Congrats. Team USA, baby. Let's go. Keep winning those medals. Cheers and good night. Good night, gents. Stay rock.